So in the last video, I showed you how to make the buttons in your Tycoon work. However, they're sort of useless at the moment because we don't have any currency that we can use to purchase the items. So the Tycoon can be completed straight away. So I'm going to show you how to add um, the cash or money values to your game so that players actually have to uh, spend it in order to unlock things. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Explorer panel and we're going to insert another script. Um, just before we do that though, I'm just going to look at this script that we worked on um, previously. And I realized that we, we didn't use it in the end. So I was going to have a separate script for the, for the buttons, but um, we ended up putting it all into the plot handler. So that's okay. I'm just going to delete that script from last time. Uh, and instead we're going to insert another script and I'm going to call this script um, uh, data, okay, because it's going to handle the player's data, such as their currency, whatever. And then in the code here, I'm going to firstly create another player added event. So when a player joins the game, I'm just going to do a comment here so that we can understand what we're working on. So when a player joins the game, we're going to say player added curl on connect function, and we have the argument of the player, so we can actually do things to this this player. And what we want to do is we want to obviously give them a money value to keep track of how much they've got. And we want this to appear in the leaderboards in the top right of the game. And to do this, we need to uh, actually create a folder. So we're going to say local folder equals instance.new uh, folder, folder.name equals leader stats. And you have to make sure leader stats is in lowercase, complete lowercase, otherwise this isn't going to work. So folder.parent equals player. So we've created a folder which is going to store all of the player's values that we want to appear on the leaderboard, such as their cash. So we're now going to create that specific cash or money value. Now I am going to call it cash. Again, you can call it whatever you want, but probably for this tutorial it's best to just stick to what I'm doing for now. So we're going to insert an int value, okay, an integer uh, int is short for integer, that just means any whole number, like 1, 2 or 3, it can store a number, as long as it's not got decimal places. So cache.name equals cache, cache.value, we're just going to set that to 0 for now, and cache.parent equals folder. We're putting this cache value into this folder, and when a value enters the leader stats folder, it will then appear in the top right corner of the screen, on the leaderboard. So let me show you that right now. If I click on the play button and we have a look at the um, top right corner here, you'll see that we now have a leaderboard. So now what we need to do is we need to be able to purchase things, right, using this value. So let's click on the stop button and now we're going to head back to our plot handler which is where we have got the code for when we touch a button. Now, we're going to want to scroll down to the part where we touch our button here, so around line 30. And what we want to do is we firstly, once we've made sure that the player that is touching the button is in fact the owner of the plot, we want to make sure they have enough currency. So firstly, we need to actually get the price of the item that they want to unlock. So what we'll do is we will go back to our template plot which is over here and we'll select every single item and then we will click on the attribute in the properties panel we'll click on the plus we will then insert a number attribute and we'll call it price so click on save and then we're going to insert a price value here so for example 300. In fact, you know what? We're not going to do that. We're going to delete this attribute because rather than having the attribute set to the specific item, I think it's better to actually set it to the specific button because we could have um, multiple items and rather than just setting the price for each uh, item, I think it's better to do it per button. So we're going to go down, we're going to make sure the button is selected first. So this button. I'm going to go to the properties panel and we're going to insert an attribute. We're going to name it uh, price and we're going to set the type to number. 
and we're going to set this to let's say 50 for example okay so to unlock this button it will now cost 50 cash so now we've set that up we just need to read it in our script so we're going to get the price value by saying local price i'm just going to zoom in here local price equals button colon get attribute price now Let's just make sure there is a price value because there might not be a price value. We, we might have forgotten to set a price. And if we've done that, um, then we'll just let the player have the item for free. <laughs> Why not? But if there is a price, then we will say uh, if player.leaderstats.cash.value is less than price, then we're going to put a message to the output, a warn message which is just an orange message saying you cannot afford this item. And then we will just say return and that will kill the script where it is. It won't go any further. It will kill this event. So it will stop here uh, until we, we press the button again. So we've just checked to make sure the player can afford the item. Uh, and if they can't, if their cash value is less than the price, we will return. And if there is no price, then this if statement won't run. It will just carry on. So let's apply the edits and just head back to the game. You can just press the play button and it should save your script. And I'm just going to pause the video whilst I walk over to the plot. So here we are in the plot. I've opened up the output window. I'm just going to clear it so it's easier to see any new messages. I'm going to step on the button. Now we have zero cash. So what I expect to happen is when I step on the button, we should get some messages in the output saying that I can't afford the item and the poster shouldn't appear. There we go. So it's printing out, you cannot afford this item. And it's printed out 11 times because it's registered 11 separate touches from my different body parts because it keeps touching the item. But the good news is we can't afford it. Now let's just give ourselves some cash to make sure that this is actually working. Now, whenever you're working with leader stats and cash and these sort of values, if you want to give yourself some additional cash, it's quite easy. However, you can't do this from your client. You have to go into server mode because if you do it on the client, uh, it won't be registered on the server. This is because it's preventing exploiters from changing their own cash. So what you need to do is you need to, and you can only do this in Roblox Studio, but if you click on current client and you set it to server mode what you can then do is go to the explorer click on the players tab select your player and then select the leader stats folder inside of it and then select the cash value and you can set this to whatever value you'd like so for example we're going to set it to 500 and when you've done that if you head back to current client by clicking on the current server button which is up here we can now see that we have got 500 cash. So this time, if we step on the button, let's see what happens. I'm gonna clear the output one more time. I'm gonna step on our button. And there you go. We were able to purchase the item. However, we haven't deducted the 50 cash from our 500 cash. So in theory, the player could still complete the game very quickly because we're not taking their money away. So in order to remove the money, very simple, we'll just click on the stop button, head back to the plot handler, and we're going to then add an else here to our if statement. Because at this point, if the, um, actually what we could just do is outside of this if statement, because it's going to return if the player can't afford it. So if we get to this point, we know the player can afford the item. So we know there's a price and we know that they can afford it because otherwise it would have returned by now. So at this point in the code, we can just say player.leaderstats.cash.value uh, minus equals price. And when you say minus equals, it takes the current value and it removes this value from it. So this is just deducting the price from the leader stats. So again, let's click on the play button in the top uh, left area of the screen. And let's try this one more time. So I'm going to step on the button. Let's just uh, go and set our cash to 500 again on the server. So Explorer, leader stats, cash, we'll set it to 500. Go back to client mode. 
and let's step on the button. Let's see what happens. There we go. It took away the cache and we now have 450. So we've just managed to add leader stats, which has now taken our tycoon to the next level. The next thing we need to do is we need to add some way of earning cash. So we're going to look at how to make a dropper in the next video. So I'll see you there. If you enjoyed this one, please do like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.